recently on Wild Reborn. Don't forget to like and subscribe. What makes us human? Is it our ability to dream, to remember, to build a future out of imagination? We construct cities from stone, paint the cosmos in poetry, and engineer atoms to obey our will. But beneath our art, our ambition, and our empathy lies a code, shared, ancient, and not entirely ours. In 2010, the Neanderthal genome was fully sequenced. We discovered that most non-African humans alive today carry 1 to 4% Neanderthal DNA. They are not just our past, they are part of our present. What if they could be part of our future too? We speak of progress as if it's a straight line. But what if humanity is a loop, a spiral that returns to its roots with every leap forward? Man is the only creature who refuses to be what he is. Albert Camus In our DNA, there are whispers older than pyramids, traits we carry yet don't fully understand. Some researchers believe Neanderthals had language, maybe not like ours, but rich in gesture, tone, and rhythm. Could they feel beauty? Could they mourn? What if the question isn't what makes us human, but rather what keeps us human in a world we now have the power to change? In 2013, geneticist George Church suggested something radical, that with the right tools, we could bring back Neanderthals, not from fossils, but from synthetic biology. We already insert Neanderthal genes into mice to study brain development. In stem cells, Neanderthal DNA has been edited into human lines to observe gene expression. This is not science fiction. These are peer-reviewed papers, but laws are cautious. In most countries, embryos with modified DNA cannot be grown past 14 days. Why? Because beyond that, we risk creating life with uncertain futures. Still, the tools are evolving faster than the laws. Artificial wombs are no longer theoretical. Gene editing is becoming precise. So we must ask, what would it mean to give birth to another kind of human? In 2022, scientists created synthetic mouse embryos using only stem cells, no egg, no sperm. At the same time, researchers in China published work on growing monkey embryos with human cells, hybrids, not of myth, but of microscopes. It's not the how that limits us anymore. It's the should. Could we design a Neanderthal child who ages slowly, resists disease, sees in the dark? Possibly. But what world would they be born into? Would they have a name or a file number? a family, or a research grant. Creating a Neanderthal hybrid isn't just a biological question. It's a moral one. Would this being have rights, citizenship, the right to vote, to love, to grieve? Or would they be studied, managed, and patented? Human rights laws assume a single species. But if we create a new one, where do they stand? In 2018, the world reacted with outrage when Chinese scientist He Jiang Kui edited human embryos to resist HIV. The twins were born. The scientific community condemned it, not because it was impossible, but because it was done without consensus. So when it comes to Neanderthals, we must ask, do we treat them as other or as kin? Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights begins, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. But what defines a human being? DNA, thought, heartbeat. If we created someone with 96% of our genome, but not our legal protections, would they have dignity or designation? Imagine a Neanderthal applying for a passport, a driver's license, a loan. Would they be seen as person or precedent? For over a century, the dream of building a better human has haunted scientific imagination. In the 1920s, Soviet researchers allegedly explored the possibility of hybridizing humans and apes, seeking strength, stamina, and obedience. Whether fact or legend, 
the idea reveals a mindset that biology could be engineered for war. During the Cold War, nations invested heavily in enhancing soldiers through chemicals, conditioning, even genetics. Programs like MKUltra sought to unlock the mind. Others look to biology for resilience. And in fiction, we see echoes everywhere, from super soldiers to ape warriors bred for battle, not for choice. These visions raise a timeless question. Are we shaping protectors or tools? As we contemplate reviving our Neanderthal cousins, we must be careful. Would they be celebrated as sentient beings with rights and dignity? Or would the temptation arise to design them, stronger, tougher, more useful than we are? History reminds us, when we shape life without empathy, the results rarely honor life at all. In pop culture, we're fascinated by hybrids. From Planet of the Apes to Captain America, the dream is always the same, faster, stronger, better. But real super soldier programs weren't about capes. They were about control. What happens when the line between warrior and weapon blurs? Could future Neanderthal hybrids be bred for endurance, emotional detachment, loyalty? If so, would they ever be allowed to say no? As a society, we must decide now, before the science makes that choice for us. Imagine a child is born today, broad face, strong build, ancient eyes. Would they be embraced or branded as different? Studies show that even subtle facial differences impact social bias. A Neanderthal human hybrid could face discrimination, fear, even fascination. Would they live in isolation or become a symbol? In 2020, researchers used AI to reconstruct likely Neanderthal faces. They look familiar, not alien, a child of both worlds, and maybe a bridge. Think about the first public photo. Would it go viral? Would it spark love or fear? Would tabloids call them the missing link? Would kids tease them? Or would they become a kind of living symbol? There are already court cases about synthetic embryos. How long before one involves a being who is 95% human and 5% ancient? Would they get to choose who they are? Or would the world choose for them? Neanderthals were not brutes. They buried their dead with flowers, painted caves, shaped tools with care. They may have played music, a 60,000. Year-old bone flute was found in Slovenia. Some believe they sang. They live slower, closer to the earth. Could that perspective heal something in us? In art, they might show us new forms. In music, lost harmonics. In science, intuitive designs drawn from nature. And in spirit, perhaps a return to reverence. Not religion, but awe. A shared silence with the land. A slower rhythm a different wisdom. Imagine a Neanderthal temple, not stone, but rhythm. Songs pass through bones and breath. What if they saw time differently, measured in seasons, not hours? A Neanderthal scientist might not build a particle accelerator, but might hear harmony in atomic vibration. In Japan, there's a concept called wabi-sabi, beauty in imperfection, in the worn, the ancient. What if our cousins lived in wabi-sabi by nature? Could they reteach us reverence for the wild, for decay, for the sacred silence between words? Maybe the real frontier isn't space, it's compassion. To see another kind of human, not as threat, but as mirror, a being who doesn't ask to conquer, only to belong. Maybe that's the next step in evolution, not power, but empathy. So we ask again, what would it mean to meet ourselves in someone else's eyes? Science is moving fast. The laws are trying to catch up. But beyond the ethics, beyond the headlines, lies something deeply human. What if reviving Neanderthals wasn't about domination, but about communion? They were not beasts. They buried their dead, honored the cycles of life and death and may have believed in something greater than themselves. 
Imagine sharing our world with a cousin who sees life through an older, wilder lens. What would they add to our art, our music, our stories? What new rhythms might they hear in the wind? What forgotten truths might they help us remember? In science, they might see simplicity. In spirituality, perhaps they'd remind us of reverence, a shared fire, a new family, a second chance to walk alongside someone different, and still so familiar. Maybe humanity isn't a boundary to defend, but a gift to share. So the question isn't just, should we bring them back? It's, are we ready to meet ourselves through them? What do you think? Let us know in the comments and subscribe for more journeys to the edge of science, soul, and possibility.